This is the realhomerecording.com video for audio mixing ATSC A85 standards. The full name for the standard is ATSC A85 ITU R BS.1770 3. We'll just call it ATSC A85 for short for the rest of this video. But really, this video is the Cliff Notes version of the 72 page document called ATSC Recommended Practice Techniques for Establishing and Maintaining Audio Loudness for Digital Television, parenthesis A85 2013, parenthesis. This guy does not cover surround sound mixing. Sorry, I mix in stereo, I don't have a 5.1 setup. I come from a music and radio show mixing background, so when I mix for computer audio delivery, such as CD, MP3, web videos, podcast, what have you, I go for the loudest that I can get without destroying the mix, which is often quieter than other music. As you guys know, I am a huge proponent of not being a part of the loudness wars and the cool thing about ATSC A85 is that they are also anti-loudness wars. The purpose of loudness standards is so that you don't annoy your audience. A uniform loudness level allows TV audiences to set their desired volume level and then that volume level will be consistent no matter what channel they change to which show or commercial they're watching, an unannoyed audience is a happy audience. Before reading the 72-page document that I referenced earlier, I was intimidated by this standard. I didn't know how hard it was going to be to mix, to adhere to the standard. And I will say thanks to modern advancements in technology, in metering, in you know budget gear working quite well and i'm referring to a spl meter that cost me 60 bucks i don't know what they would have cost years ago but you know 60 dollars is well within the reach of the basement studio guys the key takeaways that i got from the recommended practices document are as follows you want to mix your anchor element first this is how loudness should ideally be measured as specified by the guide because other audio elements will be mixed around it what is the anchor element it is overall the loudest element of the mix and should be nine times out of ten the dialogue tracks voiceovers people on screen talking for interviews or if they are if you have a narrative like a film you know, your actors, anybody who's talking, any voices are considered the anchor element. Your anchor element is the human voice by itself without any sound effects or music behind it. I'm not sure who did the study, but what they did is they took a group of people and they figured out that a range between plus 2.4 decibels and negative 5.4 decibels from a loudness average was acceptable for that test group. The zero decibel point is the average target loudness, also known as integrated loudness value or dialogue normalization or dial norm of the mix. If you don't have a broadcast spec from a network, then your target loudness, your target integrated loudness should be negative 24 LKFS. You should keep the true peak below negative 2 dB TP, which is what will be read out on your meter. And as I just said, you should keep your isolated dialogue level variances no less than negative 5.4 LKFS and no more than plus 2.4 LKFS. So if you're going with negative 24, that would be negative 29.4 on the low end and negative... 21.6 at the loudest and that is what I chose to mix at when I was mixing a TV pilot. You should not intentionally operate at the high or low side of the target range. Keep your sound dynamic. The document says that you should anticipate a plus or minus 2 LKFS variance but like I said negative 5.4 and plus 2.4 is good.
And really, you should aim for that anyway, the uh, plus or minus two LKFS, because when you go and drop your music beds into the mix, it'll be a lot easier to work with. Assuming, of course, that you have music beds that don't vary in loudness too much, let me tell you, that's really annoying. Yes, stock music that is just way too dynamic, annoying. Note to anyone who's making stock music, stop it. Here are a few key pieces of gear that you'll need. An ATS A85-2013 compliant meter, so either hardware or software, and a sound pressure level meter. For example, I own Tone Booster's TB EBU loudness software meter, which is a VST plugin, and a Galaxy Audio CM-130 SPL meter. I'd also recommend that you buy IK Multimedia's ARC2 system, which I'll get into more detail about in another mixing for TV video. And if you have the budget and time is money, as they say in business, then I would recommend Isotope RX Loudness Control because it's another useful tool to have. Here's how to set up your gear so it's a little bit easier to mix. You're going to take the 440 hertz tone. That's right, not 1 kilohertz, not 997. If you ever uh, aligned gear properly. No, they've figured out that 440 is the best frequency to align gear at. So you align it to negative 20 dB full scale. And you can download that wave file in the video description. Once you have your gear aligned to negative 20 dBFS, you're going to take a pink noise file that's actually, they, they filtered it so that it's right where it needs to be for proper alignment with an SPL meter. So you're going to take that pink noise file, send it through your speakers, set your SPL meter to C weighting with a slow response, and you're going to set it based on this table that's provided in the ATSC document, which I'll put on screen right now. The level you'll set of that is determined based on the size of your room, and the reason for that is an identical sound pressure level is perceived as louder in smaller rooms. So, I found that a 76 decibel sound pressure level is the correct spot for my room and speaker setup. I tried 78 decibels, but it was just too loud for me. It was hurting my ears. So, you know, when you hurt your ears, that means ear fatigue is just going to be too much. So that's where I set it at. And your preference will probably vary. So with the SPL meter going, you're, you're going to set the volume of each speaker individually so that you put it right where your head would be when you're mixing. You got to back yourself off the meter a little bit so that it's not picking up any reflections off your head. And then you're going to set the volume level on your speaker. Now what I've done when I set this up is I'll actually use the Windows volume. And you know, first I'll, I'll raise my volume on my speaker a little bit. But then I'll use the Windows volume mixer and set that. Because that's a little bit more precise. And also if I had to stop mixing and then go watch like a, a YouTube video or something. I can go and adjust that level down. And then I can just go back up to the number so it's the same. And I'll also use the stereo balance that's a little bit deeper in the menus so that my left and right speaker are equal. The single most important parameter in the audio chain is the dialogue normalization metadata. If your integrated loudness is negative 24 LKFS, then you would set your dialogue norm, which is spelled out D-I-A-L-N-O-R-M, you would set that to negative 24. So what is a loudness meter? It's kind of like a VU meter, except it's way more accurate. It is based on what the human ear perceives to be loud. It also has gating so that when there's no audio going on, the meter doesn't say, hey, this is really quiet. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but the term anchor element is defined in the guide as the reference point that other elements are balanced around. It's something that a reasonable viewer would focus on when setting their volume control. Here's a bit of trivia. 
The term layback is a post-production technique where audio is rejoined with the associated video after editing, mixing, or sweetening. True peak is defined as a maximum absolute level of the signal waveform in the continuous time domain measured per BS.1770-3. Units are measured relative to 100% true peak. And true peak is important because it protects all the different audio gear that is down the stream. And again, negative two is the recommended true peak if you don't know what the network spec is. When I was mixing, I rarely got close to negative two. I was really getting at numbers like negative six and negative seven for my true peak value. In case this wasn't clear earlier, VU and PPM meters are worthless for loudness measurement. Forget about using them when it comes to mixing TV programs. So really guys, that about wraps it up for this video. It's not that difficult. Basically, um, my real world experience with this is to first mix all your human voice elements. So your interview, your narrator, anything that is the human voice needs to be soloed when you're mixing. And then you watch the meter, you listen with your ears, and you just keep the loudness around that level. You know, again, negative 24 in my case. And I watch the, you know, if you watch this, see how it's going up and down. It looks like kind of like a mountain range. This will show you uh, where about your audio signal is. And, you know, once you keep just keeping it within the tolerance of negative 24, which this is actually set up for negative 24 being the normal uh, reference level, then you're good to go. And then you just, after you mix your human voice tracks, you move on and, and you, you don't touch anything once you're done that. After you get your volume great with the voice, you don't even use the meter after that. You just go add your music and sound effects in and anything else that's non-human voice elements and you're good to go. One last note, there is a link to the guide in the video description and I would recommend printing out page 49 because it's a quick reference guide that goes over some of the basics that I talked about in this video. If you have time, I would recommend reading the entire guide because it, do it does get into a little bit more detail than I went in here. But uh, for the most part, you know, don't be intimidated by this. It's uh, pretty easy once you do it the first time. And I wish you luck. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.